What's up, Glorifiers? We're back at it. And today, I'm bringing you three artists that I absolutely think you should know who are making some serious waves in this contemporary art space. Now, if you've been rocking with me for a while now, you know that I love shining a light on the folks that are pushing boundaries and doing something incredibly special. And y'all, today, we're talking about artists like Luke Agata, Demetrius Wilson, and Megan Gabrielle Harris. They are all on fire right now. Now, if you're new here, welcome to Dear Glory. I'm Mariah Elise. This is where we dig super deep into all of the nuances of the art world. We break it all down and talk about what you need to be paying attention to. So today, I'm giving you the inside scoop on why these three artists are ones you definitely want to keep on your radar. Let's start with Luke Agata. Now, I first met Luke at the Chicago Expo. And as you've heard me say before, I love, love these moments of serendipity. And I love when I get the chance to talk about artists that I've had the pleasure of meeting and that I've been in conversation with. So with that being said, shout out to my girl, Kendra Walker, who is the founder of Atlanta Art Week, who got us all together in Chicago that specific year. If you guys are not familiar with Atlanta Art Week, please get familiar with it. It's putting Atlanta on the map. Shout out to Kendra. Kendra, if you see this, I'm proud of you, girl. Anyway, back to Luke. Luke Agata's paintings forces us to sit with our own discomfort. His surreal, haunting, disembodied figures, they don't just occupy a dreamlike landscape. They exist within spaces where history, identity, and the self are constantly shifting and constantly colliding. His work captures this emotional weight of living between worlds where the past isn't just remembered, but physically felt in every stroke, in every form. His ability to balance the abstract with the intensely personal, the intensely figurative, allows his work to reflect the human struggle, allows his work to reflect what humans, what people, what we are struggling with in the world and how the world doesn't stop moving with our struggle. The viewer isn't just invited to observe, but to confront the fractures within their own identity. Broader questions of what it means to exist in a globalized post-colonial world. Now, as you know, gallery representation, it can be transformative for an artist in their career. And I want you guys to remember how big of a deal it is to be represented by a gallery, especially the one that Luke is represented by. Luke's representation by Monique Maloche Gallery signals much more than validation. It places him within this critical conversation in this contemporary space. Monique Maloche doesn't just work with artists, they're championing their voices, they challenge, redefine, and push the boundaries of what art can say about society at large. Their roster includes artists that aren't just simply participating in this space, but are actively shaping its direction. Luke's inclusion in this space means that his work isn't just seen, it's not just on view, it's being positioned alongside some of the most important and compelling voices of our time. It's a nod to his ability to not only explore complex themes, but to do so in a way that resonates with the rest of the art world, that resonates with the pulse of the art world, the pulse of humanity, and crucially, with those who define it. Now I have a lot more to say about Luke, but before I go any further, I think it's the right time that I share with you guys something that's the closest to my heart, that's so special to myself and to my family. I'm 34 weeks pregnant. My husband and I are over the moon. We're so excited to be expecting our first baby, a beautiful, beautiful baby girl. This journey has been such a blessing and I'm beyond grateful to share this moment with you. My amazing Dear Glory community, you guys have been such a big part of our world and it feels right to share this with you. I mean, I can't not share it with you, I have to tell you. I cannot wait for you guys to virtually meet her when she arrives. So as we get ready for her arrival, I wanted to let you know that I'll still be creating videos, but starting in November, I'll be on maternity leave. Baby girl is due at the beginning of December. So things are gonna slow down just a little bit. I'll keep the content going, but I won't make a weekly appearance like I have been. I hope you guys can bear with me as we settle into this new chapter of our lives, this new chapter of parenthood and motherhood. I'm gonna miss connecting with you guys as often, but I'll be back January. Hopefully I'll be back. I've never been a mom before, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but I appreciate you guys and your support. 
This community means the absolute world to me, and I can't wait to share more of this journey with you guys. Let's get back to Luke. For those of you who may not be familiar with Monique Maloche Gallery, let me take a moment to share just how impactful they've been. This gallery has represented some of the most transformative and influential artists of our time, like Rasheed Johnson and Sanford Biggers. Artists whose work shapes cultural conversations in ways that have resonated globally. And beyond those names, Monique Baloche has hosted some truly, truly iconic visiting artists like Nari Ward, Nina Chanel Abney, Nick Cave, Amy Sherald, and Carrie James Marshall. These, these aren't just artists. These people are trailblazers. These people are visionaries. They have been cultural trailblazers. So when you see an artist like Luke Agata sign with Monique Maloche, that's not just an achievement. That's an indication that his work is contributing to the legacy of artists who have been shaping how we think, how we feel, and how we engage with art. Now, what makes Luke's trajectory even more significant is that he's also working with Robert's Project, another powerhouse in the contemporary art world. Robert's Project is based in Los Angeles, and it has been pivotal in elevating the careers of so many important artists, especially those who are bringing critical perspectives on identity, race, and of course, history. Artists like Kehinde Wally, Amuaka Buafo, and Titus Kafar, who themselves have challenged and redefined the way that we view and the way that we have interacted with these conversations in the, in the contemporary art world in the past few years. They're all a part of the Roberts Project family. Roberts Project Project has been nose to their commitment to artists who are not just making visually stunning work, but are diving super deep into narratives that matter, stories of displacement, stories of their own history, stories of the intersection, not stories, but the actual intersections of politics and arts. Being exhibited by them is not just about exposure. It's about being a part of a community of artists who are pushing forward a broader, more inclusive dialogue in the art world. And that's why Luke's work at both Monique Maloche and Robert's project is such a monumental, it's such a monumentous achievement. These two galleries are known for identifying artists who continue to push and shape boundaries. When you see an artist like Luke Gata working with both Monique Maloche and Robert's project, it speaks volumes about his potential his voice, and the impact that his work is already having. It's a signal that Luke isn't just a rising artist. He is being positioned as part of the future of contemporary art, part of a lineage that will continue to influence and inspire for years to come. This is why you need to take notice of Luke. His work is a part of something much bigger, and these galleries are validating that in a major way. But y'all, I don't want you to forget the role of the collector and how they have also played a part in Luke's success. Luke's success is not just about gallery representation or international exhibitions. It's about the people who stand behind him, his collectors. And I know firsthand that they are really, really supportive of him. His collector base, his collector base is incredible. They are right there alongside Luke, pushing him, advocating for him, pushing him forward and championing his work. They are truly taking on the definition of the collector, being a steward of the artwork. They are investing in him. They are helping to tell his stories. They're helping to build his legacy. And this is where the role of the collector becomes so, so crucial. Collectors play such an essential part in artists and their success. It's not just about owning a piece of art. It's about being a part of the artist and their growth, part of the larger narrative that their work represents. Luke's collector base are 100% a testament to that. They believed in him from the start and they support and they're helping him reach new heights. With that combination, his art, the galleries, the collectors, man, you just have to be thankful for a good ecosystem of things around you to help push you forward if you're an artist. So when you see Luke's work being supported by such an incredible, incredible ecosystem, you know that his rise is not just a matter of choice. It's not just a matter of chance. It's a result of a deep belief in his vision and the power of his art to transcend borders and to tell stories that matter. It's truly a testament to all of these people working together with Luke to build on his career. 
now I can't talk about how important a career trajectory is without talking about his media support, right? Luke's career is already gaining momentum. We know that, but it's gaining momentum also with media. He's getting attention from major outlets. Chris Terry recently wrote a feature on Luke and the Observer, praising his ability to explore identity and place. And in Cultured Magazine, Katie Kern dove deep into his practice, explaining how his, with his work balances the surreal with the deeply personal. I encourage you to check out these articles, follow Luke on Instagram, and keep an eye on his upcoming exhibitions. As we've discussed before, tracking an artist in their media attention is key in understanding where their key is headed, their career is headed. Luke's path is looking really promising. I spoke with Luke a few days ago to tell him happy birthday. Happy birthday to you again, my friend. When I spoke to Luke, I asked him if he had any advice that he wanted to share with emerging artists out there. And he said a few amazing things. He urges you to take your time, embrace the potentials hidden in the power of being less known as you develop your best work. He wanted to tell you to never bother about being ignored. I thought that one was incredibly powerful. Never bother about being ignored. Man, pay attention to that one. I think we've all been there. And I had to remind myself that I've been there, that I'm sometimes still there. I might be there right now. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are reminding yourself of that. Luke also left this piece of advice. He said to patiently do excellent work, no matter how long it takes, to let no expectation or opportunity pressure you into putting out something prematurely. Anyway, let's move on. Gotta talk about my boy, Demetrius Wilson. When I first came across his work, it wasn't just the vibrancy and the chaoticness that caught my attention. That did catch my attention, but it was the tension. It was the tension within his work that got me going. His paintings feel alive, like they're constantly shifting. They're never settling, but beneath that surface energy is this quiet, almost meditative layer of reflection. There's a real depth to his work, a sense that each piece is asking larger questions about his existence and his identity. It's just something, his work is not just abstract for the sake of abstraction. It's personal, it's raw, and it's compelling. It feels intentional, as though Demetrius is processing something very visceral, something deeply human. His paintings hold this delicate balance between chaos and order, between movement and stillness. It's like he's navigating that fine line between beauty and between beauty and destruction. And in doing so, he invites us to sit with those contradictions. You can feel the tension in every layer of paint, and that's what draws you in. There's always, always more to uncover and more to feel. And his recent solo exhibition, Begin the End at Harper's Gallery in New York, Demetrius took his explorations a little bit deeper, tackling the concept of the apocalypse in a way that felt intimate rather than catastrophic. For him, the apocalypse isn't just about the end of the world. It's about the choices that we make every day, the decisions that shape our personal worlds. His abstract compositions are challenging the viewer to find deeper meaning in this uncertainty, and that's what makes his work so powerful. He's not gonna give you all the answers. He makes you sit with the questions, but it's important to know one key aspect of Demetrius's growth as an artist is his MFA program at Hunter College which has a reputation for fostering groundbreaking talent. Now, while still in school, he's already managed to achieve what many artists strive for their entire career. International solo exhibitions, press attention, and a growing collector base and gallery shows. This speaks to his talent, but not only to his talent, also the thoughtful ways he's navigating the art world. Now, one thing that is often quiet in the art world, but critical, is the role of the collector. We spoke about this with Luke. In Demetrius's case, it's been incredible to see the way collectors have rallied behind him. That kind of support is crucial because it allows an artist like Demetrius to keep expanding his practice. When his work was featured in RC's 29 Emerging Black Artists to Discover This Black History Month in 2024, it was a major moment of recognition. I believe the first time he had been mentioned in RC. Now, luckily, I got to kind of tag along with that because during that time, I was curating an exhibition, a group exhibition that he was involved in. Now, you know, I got, you know, I got a little bit of shine <laughs> and so did the show when they mentioned his name because they also mentioned my name. So I appreciate, I appreciate you, Demetrius, for letting me tag along in, in that press moment. 
but it was also a reflection of the solid foundation that his community, the writers, the collectors, the galleries, the school, right, have helped shape and helped building him. Now, one of the reasons Demetrius Wilson has been able to build such strong momentum is his gallery exhibitions. He's had the opportunity to show his work at some really significant galleries. In 2024, this year, Demetrius had a solo exhibition at Harper's New York called Begin the End. Even exhibiting there places Demetrius in conversation with some of these, the brightest talents in New York in contemporary art. Exhibiting in such a, a, exhibiting in such a well-respected space allowed him to bring his ideas to a wider audience, showing how his work is speaking to intimate themes and global themes. Now then there's Half Gallery in New York where Demetrius exhibited his solo show, Bam, in 2024. Half Gallery is a powerhouse in the contemporary arts and in New York and being part of their program puts right puts him right in the center of this influential space. Exhibiting in Half Gallery, Half Gallery, it's a bit of a powerhouse itself and being a part of their programming puts him right in the center of this space. Exhibiting at Half Gallery, it gave him the opportunity to connect with curators, collectors, and critics who's always looking for the next important voice in contemporary art. His show, BAM, fit great into that framework. His abstract paintings engage with these visceral themes, and the gallery gave him the platform to explore that fully. We cannot forget about his international presence. In 2023, he had solo exhibitions at T293 Gallery in Rome. And and Tamar Ghani projects in London. These galleries are known for identifying artists whose work has the potential to make significant impact on the global stage. By exhibiting this in these spaces, he isn't just working in one market. He's expanding his reach, working with collectors and institutions against amongst different continents. Gallery recognition like these are critical for every artist in their career. He's building a solid foundation for what's next. Harper's Half Gallery, Tamar, T293, and we cannot forget about his group show with Mitochondria Gallery, curated by myself. These names aren't just names. They represent networks of collectors, curators, and critics who play a pivotal role in shaping an artist in their trajectory. Exhibiting in these spaces means that Demetrius's work is being seen by the right people in the right places and at the right time. When an artist is showing at galleries of those type of calibers, it's a sign that their work is being taken seriously, not just by the artists, but by those that help the art world move forward. It's not just about just securing a solo art group exhibition. It's about being a part of this ecosystem that fosters growth and fosters visibility. Demetrius's gallery support is giving him the platform that he needs to continue expanding. And with that kind of backing, it's clear that he's on a strong trajectory towards even greater success. Another driver for Demetrius has been his press coverage, which can be a game changer for any artist, right? And Demetrius Wilson has been steadily gaining attention in the media. It's not just about just getting his name out there, it's about being recognized for the substance of his work. One of, the many, one of the most meaningful conversations we've had about his practice was actually right here on Dear Glory. So make sure you guys check that out when you get a chance. When I interviewed Demetrius, we went extremely deep into his influences and how he approaches his work. We also talked about his familial history. That conversation allowed us to explore his process and his practice in ways that other platforms just haven't. <laughs> it was a two hour conversation and it gave so many people a more personal look at what drives his vision. Another important platform that's recognized Demetrius is Artsy, where he was highlighted again as one of the artists to discover in Black History Month. Being featured by Artsy, it's not just a write-up, it's an acknowledgement of an artist's potential and long-term impact. They don't just spotlight everybody. They're identifying artists who are shaping the future of this space. And Demetrius is right there in that conversation. And that wasn't even the only time Artsy mentioned him. I believe he was mentioned twice by Artsy. Once, another time, as an artist to watch. So, <laughs> Demetrius has also been featured on platforms like the Cere Cerebral Woman podcast, where he had a candid discussion about his creative process, the Sunseeker podcast, where he dig deep into his influences and the broader ideas of his work. 
and how his work is engaging. Each of these interviews offers a different angle into his practice, and together they create a fuller picture of what he's achieving and trying to achieve with his work. Now let's not forget his conversation with Bowl Gallery in Berlin, where they featured him in a deep dive about his exhibition there. These conversations allowed Demetrius to articulate his vision and give his audience a direct window into his world. And Demetrius is young. <laughs> I believe Demetrius may still be in his 20s. He still has so much time to continue to grow and expand. So for collectors, institutions, galleries, fans of Demetrius, these fans, these interviews are just more than, exp these interviews are crucial. You can learn more about his practice. It's a way to get to know him, to get to know the artist behind the work. Now, for those of you, now speaking about collectors, now speaking of, now speaking about collectors, to those of you who are new collectors or just starting your journey, I'm really excited to continue our masterclasses, Mastering Your Art Collection, which gives essential strategies to new collectors. It's a two hour class and I guarantee you it's one you don't wanna miss. Now I'll tell you, I had a collector that I spoke with after one of the classes reached out to me, telling me that she expected to learn from the masterclass but her surprise was leaving grounded in her decision-making as a collector. This masterclass is happening on January 26th, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern. That means <laughs> it's 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Central, okay? It's designed specifically to help new collectors build a strong, hopefully mistake-free collection. You'll learn the best practices, you'll avoid common pitfalls, and you'll gain the confidence to make informed decisions as you are going on your art collecting journey. So if you're ready to take your next step, if you're ready to do the thing in building your collection and you want guidance, I encourage you to join this to our masterclass. You could sign up through the early access link in the link in the description and get 20% off of the class. Trust me, the information you will be receiving Honestly, it should be a $300 course and it will be in the future. So for now, take advantage of this $60 class, get that 20% off and participate. It's a live masterclass. So you guys can interact and ask questions. Anyway, last but not, join the link in the description. Now, last but not least, let's talk about Megan's rise. Now, Megan's rise in the art world has been impressive to me. I've been seeing her pop up and show up time and time again lately. So to say in the least, I think she's going somewhere, or she definitely has the potential to. In 2024, she was highlighted in art news for her solo booth at 154 London. But perhaps one of the most significant moments in her career so far was being part of Christie's London, a note to self, a group show in 2023, which was curated by Mashonda T. Freer. Now, if you don't know Mashonda, get to know her and her organization. I've never met her personally. I'm sure we're only a few degrees of separation. We know a lot of the same people, but I have a lot of respect for the work that she's doing. So definitely get to know Mashonda. Back to Megan. She was a part of the Christie's London A Note to Self group show in 2023, curated by Mashonda. This wasn't just any exhibition. It was a powerful, powerful statement about representation and self-awareness. And Megan's inclusion speaks volumes about the impact her work is having. Now, now just look at the triangle there. Christie's London, one of the biggest auction houses in the entire world, Mashonda, and Megan. Okay, sometimes we have to look at the people that people are associated with, the organizations that people are associated with, that people have been in conversation with, to kind of determine where they could be headed. Now, Mashonda, for those of you who may not be familiar, again, is an absolute powerhouse in the art world. She is the founder of Art Led Her, an organization dedicated to uplifting and showcasing women of color in the arts through a curatorial work. She's created spaces where underrepresented voices can be seen and heard. Her platform isn't just about showing art, it's about shifting the narrative and making sure women of color are at the forefront of the conversation in contemporary art. Megan is creating art that's not just aesthetically beautiful, it's meaningful and it's touching on themes that are critical to the times that we're living in. And trust me, when an artist can do that, people pay attention. Megan's career trajectory is also impressive beyond the gallery scene. She's collaborated with brands like Vov Clicquot, 
and Bergdorf Goodman, which are, you know, if you know, you know, you know, you know. And these collaborations are expanding her reach in ways that few emerging artists are able to do. Now, in previous videos, I've talked about all of the things, gallery representation, institutional support, but there's also brand support. There's also that, and that's what she has here that even the artists that I spoke about earlier, they might not have that yet. And I expect that they will at some point, but this, this Christie's, Mashonda, Wolf, Wolf Clicquot, Bergdorf, these brands that we just talked about, that she's working with, that she's in collaboration with, these partnerships are a sign that her vision is resonating far beyond, far beyond the fine art world and into mainstream culture. And that's why I wanted to mention Megan, because those things are important as well. To be able to go into both spaces with authenticity shows how powerful what their work is. Megan Gabrielle Harris is an artist that you need to keep an eye on, an artist that you need to keep on your radar because she's creating work that speaks to something larger. She's painting dreamscapes where black women can exist in their full power, where they're free to rest, reflect, and be at peace. This kind of work is so necessary right now. I need it. I actually need it. I need it to be my real life. I need to be at rest, to reflect, and to be at peace. And like I told you guys, I'm eight months pregnant, so those things have not been a part of my life for the past eight months. Megan is flipping that narrative. This kind of work is so necessary right now, especially in a world that often asks so much from black women and women in general. Megan is flipping that narrative. She's creating spaces for empowerment joy and solitude and in doing so she's shaping the way that we see ourselves and the way that we are able to go into spaces and be restful and be reflective now i know some of you guys might be thinking but how do i spot an artist before all of these things before they get all of these things before they start to blow off that's a real question and i got you there's an entire strategy to it and it's not just about waiting on a gallery to tell you who's next. You're gonna have to do some digging before that gallery to be finding out who that artist is. You gotta dig with the galleries. And here's what you need to be paying attention to. Number one, MFA programs. Look locally. Look who's getting the residencies. Who's winning the awards? Who's getting the fellowships? Look at the smaller galleries and the smaller art fairs, okay? That's what you need to do. Now, I'm not gonna go super deep into all of these things, I'll do so in another video because that's a completely different topic. But remember to pay attention to those four things. MFA programs, look who's doing good locally, who's the superstar in their city. Are they making moves beyond the work? Is their work going beyond their studio? Are they building a body of work that evolves and resonates over time, that remains cohesive? These are the things that tell you whether an artist is on the path to long-term success. I encourage you to follow all three of these incredible artists on social media and on Artsy and keep up with their exhibitions and continue to support their work. Watching an artist's journey from early recognition to global blame is one of the most exciting parts of being an art lover. Don't miss out on their next steps and don't forget to join the Dear Glory Collective on Patreon for even different insights and community interactions. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all for being here. I appreciate the love. Remember, I'll be slowing down just a tad bit, just a little bit in November, December, and January <laughs> because I have to go have my little baby girl and I have to take care of her. And, you know, I got to do the job, the big job, the real job. So thank you all for being here. We're all on this path to glory together. I'm learning and through my learning, I'm teaching. And when you guys have something to teach me, please do so. I love y'all. Make sure you Leave some comments in the comment section. Tell me what you think of each one of these artists. What you think about this video in itself. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. Okay, and make sure you subscribe. Yeah, and like the video. Give me some love. All of that stuff helps the algorithm. It helps me grow. It helps us grow as a community. I'll catch y'all later. This is Dear Glory. I'm Mariah Lees.